What's up, everybody? It's Dan from SageMathTutoring.com. And back with a video, this time covering absolute value functions, how to graph them, um, how to state the domain and range. And uh, in particular, we're working with functions where certain transformations have taken place on each function. So let's dive right into it. The first function that we want to graph is this right here, g of x. Now, I have a very specific way of doing these, and that is to set up three tables, XY table, an HV table, and another XY table. This first XY table will always feature these points no matter what. So for my student who's watching, uh, just know that, you know, you're going to want to fill these out. You're essentially going to want to memorize these, um, even if this is somewhat uh, different than the way your teacher's teaching it, it's still the case that you most certainly should be familiar with what they call the parent function. This is the parent function. It kind of looks like that. And these would be sort of famous points of the parent function. Negative 2, comma 2 is here. Negative 1, comma 1 is there. 0, 0 is there. 1, 1 is there. And 2, and 2. 2, comma 2 is there. Uh, the HV chart, H stands for horizontal transformations and V stands for vertical transformations. We're going to get to that in a moment. Um, and this XY table has to do with the final points that you're going to be writing down after having performed the transformations. Okay, And this is going to be a table that represents points on this final graph, which is the function that we're interested in graphing. Okay, So uh, I'm going to do a few problems using these tables, and hopefully by the time I'm done with it, you feel relatively comfortable with it. Now, um, I could get into what this transformation means, uh, but I'd rather just cut to the chase with regards to how to graph this, okay, in a way that's organized and in a way that's systematic. Um, a lot of teachers do emphasize understanding what this kind of transformation is called. Uh, however, I'm going to not get into that for now. I'm going to ask you to just pay attention to what your teacher says with regards to what we call these transformations, okay? Uh, but we're going to just dive into graphing it. Uh, now, as you can see, there's clearly a negative 3 here, whereas in the parent function, there isn't a negative 3. So something is going on here. Now, the bottom line is, since it's on the inside of the absolute value symbols, anything that's on the inside of the absolute value symbols is going to be a horizontal transformation. So we're just going to log that transformation here. Now, the thing about horizontal transformations is that it's always sort of the opposite of what you would think, okay? So what do I mean by that? Do you see how it says x times negative 3? Well, that means it's going to be x divided by negative 3, okay? So that's what we want to log here, okay? Now, that, once again, is only the case for horizontal transformations. We're going to have other problems in the near future that feature vertical transformations, and we're going to be logging those here, uh, and those are more straightforward, whereas when it comes to horizontal transformations, again, it's always sort of the opposite of what you would think. x times negative 3 here means x divided by negative 3. That's the only transformation that we need to log here, okay? Um, so what we could do is essentially recognize that this h column represents what you're going to be doing to the x coordinates here. Uh, the v column represents what you're going to be doing with the y coordinates. So with regards to the h column, clearly we're going to be dividing all of these x coordinates by negative 3. So you're going to have negative 2 divided by that negative 3, and that's going to give you a positive 2 thirds. You're going to have negative 1 divided by negative 3, and that's going to give you a positive 1 third. You're going to have 0 divided by that negative 3, that's going to give you a 0. You're going to have a 1 divided by negative 3, that's going to give you a negative 1 third. And you're going to have a 2 divided by that negative 3, and that's going to give you a negative 2 thirds. Now, since there's nothing in the V column, that means we're actually not doing anything here. So that's actually a beautiful thing because it means that we could just literally copy these down again. In fact, I'm going to copy it like this. I'm going to be very lazy. So you copy it, and um, that would be this column right here. It just remains the same stuff, okay? A little awkward looking, but we're just going to go with it. So two thirds comma two happens to be on the graph. Um, that would be right around here. We have one third comma 
one that happens to be on the graph, that's going to be right here. So we could put that right there. Uh, zero comma zero is still on the graph. Uh, negative one third one is on the graph and uh, negative two thirds two is on the graph. So that's kind of a tight graph there. Let's actually zoom in to make it just look a little bit nicer. And of course, since we have these uh, fractions, it makes it a little, little kind of uh, weird. So we have this is negative two thirds. This right here is one third. And this right here is two thirds. So that's how you would graph it. And from there, you can just draw a couple straight lines. I'm drawing a straight line that goes through those. And I will draw a straight line that goes through these. Now, it is a good idea to graph this before you talk about the domain and range. Now, the domain is the set of all x coordinates along the x axis that are included on the graph, or you could say have a home on the graph. So in other words, let's say we investigate this x coordinate. If you were to go up or down, would you hit the graph somewhere? Well, yes, if I was to go up, from here, I would eventually hit the graph, okay? Now that's actually the case for all these x coordinates. So we would say that all the x values are included in the domain. And the way to represent that is to say negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? Now range is the set of, is the set of all y coordinates that are included on the graph. In other words, when you investigate the entire y axis, which y values have a home on the graph? Well, if we were to, investigate this negative nine and go right or go left, okay? Would we find a home on the graph if we went right? No. Would we find a home on the graph if we went left? No. Uh, the first time we get to a y value where we would indeed have a home on the graph is zero. And then every y value above that, if you went right or left, you would indeed find a home on the graph. So the first y value such that it's included in the graph is zero and then it goes up forever and the way to say that is you could say it goes from zero to infinity now the thing is though that zero happens to be included in the range um, the y value of zero is right here okay so it's actually included in the range and whenever it's actually included you throw a bracket around it now parentheses always goes around infinity symbols whether or not it's infinity or negative infinity okay looking at this one so once again, we have the parent function right here. We have our special points. We have the HV table. We have the XY table. This time we have a transformation taking place on the outside of the absolute value bars, which means that we're dealing with a vertical transformation. And namely, what's happening? Well, we have this uh, absolute value of X times two. So that means it's going to be times two here. Now, remember what I said about vertical transformations. It's always intuitive and straightforward. It's exactly what you think it would be. So if we have absolute values times two, you're going to represent times two right here. Okay. Now there's nothing to speak of when it comes to the horizontal transformation. So therefore we can just copy the uh, column over here to there. All right. And I'm going to once again, just copy that like this and bring it over. Okay. However, we are going to apply this vertical transformation of multiplying times two to all of these. So two times two is four. We have one times two, which is two. Zero times two is zero. We have one times two, which is two. And then we're gonna have a four there as well. So these are some points that we can plot. So we have negative two comma four, which is right here. We have negative one comma two, which is right here. We have zero comma zero um, and these, okay. And then at that point, you can once again draw some straight lines that happen to go through those perfectly. Uh, these do go forever, so you might want to draw some arrows at the end of it as well. Okay, I didn't do that last time, but you might want to communicate to your teacher that this graph does indeed go forever. Uh, the domain, once again, all real numbers, by the way, for absolute value functions, for the most part, it's always going to be that way. The range, once again, starts at zero and it goes up forever, so that's infinity.
Okay, so once again, we have our HV table, we have the parent function table, we have our empty table, which is going to be the table for this graph right here, this function right here. Now, um, as it pertains to the horizontal and vertical transformations, clearly we have something going on on the inside of the absolute value symbol. So therefore, that is going to be a horizontal transformation. So it says plus four, and you need to remember that when dealing with horizontal transformations, it's always going to be the opposite of what you would think. So if it says plus four, you're going to say minus four. Simple as that. And that's the only horizontal transformation to speak of. So that's actually what we have to do. Um, so let's apply this filter to every x coordinate. So we have negative two minus four is negative six. We have negative one minus four is negative five. We have zero minus four is negative four. We have one minus four is negative three. We have two minus four is negative two. Once again, these stay the same because there's nothing in the vertical column there. So I'm gonna steal these. And I'm just going to transfer them here, and we'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so these are the points that we should plot. So we have negative 6, 2. That's going to be right here. We're going to have negative 5, 1. We're going to have negative 4, 0. We're going to have negative 3, 1. We're going to have negative 2, 2. So once again, in my opinion, this is the best way to do transformations. Now the teacher might present a different way, but this way is ultimately gonna be the best. Um, so I'm just gonna be arrogant about that for now because being arrogant is fun. So we have arrows as well. I think we can see that the domain is gonna be once again, negative infinity to infinity and the range is going to be zero to infinity. Okay, so we have that. Looking at this one, okay, this is the first time that we have both a horizontal transformation to speak of and a vertical transformation to speak of. So what we're gonna do is log both of those. So the bottom line is in horizontal land, we have X times a negative two. What does that mean? That means we must do division by negative two here. Uh, with regards to this plus six, notice how the plus six is on the outside of the absolute values. And that means that it's going to be a vertical transformation of plus six. Okay. So that's the reality of that. So let's just apply these filters to these. So we have negative two divided by negative two. That's going to be a positive one. We have a negative one divided by a negative two. That's going to be a positive one half. We have a zero divided by a negative two, that's gonna be a zero. We have a one divided by a negative two, that's gonna be a negative one half. We have a two divided by a negative two, that's gonna be a negative one. And then looking over here, we're gonna be adding six to all these. So two plus six is eight. We have one plus six, which is seven. We have zero plus six, which is six. Um, this is, going to be a 1 plus 6, which is 7. Yeah, so it's just going to be like that. So we have 1 comma 8, which is right here as one of the uh, points on the graph. We have 1 half comma 7, which is going to be right there. And then we're going to have 0 comma 6, which is going to be right here. And then it's just kind of symmetric like that. Okay, so it would look like this. And drawing our straight lines, cutting up in this direction, and cutting up in the other direction as well, which is right here. Okay, so arrows, arrows, and then we're good to go. Now we can clearly see the domain once again, it's gonna be from negative infinity to positive infinity because all these x, values on the x-axis, if you were to go up or down, would indeed hit the graph somewhere. Um, the range, uh, certainly these y values, if you went right or left, you would not hit the graph. Same with these y values, you only have a y value that hits the graph here, okay? And that is at six. So the range would be everything from six included, all the way up to infinity. 
So for my student watching, just know that I did catch that in your notes, there was some mention of step functions. I don't know if this is included in the homework, but I did want to give a brief, um, to, I wanted to address step functions briefly, just in case. So the parent step function is this. Now, basically what this is saying is that whatever X value is in here, round it down to the next integer that's sort of below whatever this number is. So in other words, if you put 0.5 in there, okay, if you put 0.5 in there, um, I'm going to do that right now. Imagine we took this and we just decided to put a 0 0.5 in there, right? Well, that's going to end up equaling zero, all right? Because if you were to consider a number line, 0 0.5 is right here. And then what this step function says is that take that value and then round it down to the next integer. Now, integers are kind of like the nice tick marks on a number graph, including negatives, okay? So if you have a 0.5 in here, this is like a machine that forces the output to be this rounded down to the next integer, okay? Now, that is why when you're sort of dealing with the parent function of the step function, you might want to just have a couple integers, these blue integers here, and just a couple decimally things in between, okay? Now, the bottom line is zero would just round down to itself, okay? If you plug a zero in here, well, zero already is an integer, so it would quote unquote round down to itself, so that's just a zero. If you put a 0.5 in here, well, we already saw what happens. It would round down to a zero, so this is a zero also, right? Um, if you put a 0.9, that would round down to a zero, okay? And then if you had a one, that would round down to itself. Imagine you plugged in a one there, a one in here. Well, remember, these symbols say round whatever number is inside down to the next available integer. Well, if you put one in here, that would be the integer. So you put a one. And if you were to investigate 1.5, that would round down to a one also. So we put it here. If you were to investigate a 1.9, which would be here on the number line, that would round down to a one. So that would be here. And then for all the above mentioned reasons, if we put two um, into the symbols, it would round down to itself. Okay, so that would be a two. Now, you might be wondering, <laughs> you might be wondering a few things. You might be wondering how this is going to help your life. That could be one thing you're wondering. Uh, that's a different topic. But um, you might also be wondering, well, what would the graph of this look like? All right. So the bottom line is the graph of this would look like um, this kind of weird step thing. Okay. And I'll just blow it up and cut to the chase. It would look like this. Okay, notice how it always sort of ends with that open circle. Okay. And by the way, it would continue sort of, you know, down here too. All right, so it would keep going. But nonetheless, that's what it looks like. And the way I'm going to, let's just keep this here as a reference. Okay. So the way that I'm going to approach these is the same way I was approaching the previous ones. Uh, in fact, I would say that having these sort of initial points here is maybe even more important than ever, because this is just such a weird situation that we need to bring it down to earth to sort of orient ourselves, okay? Um, you know, so, I would say to just to just keep points like this in mind when it comes to the parent function, okay? Now, let's take a look at what they're saying here. They're saying negative six. The negative six is happening on the outside of the symbols, so therefore we know we're clearly dealing with a vertical transformation, and that is minus six, okay? So... Good news. We can totally wrap our heads around what this graph looks like 
by just realizing, oh, there's nothing in the age column, so therefore I can just copy these. Okay, I could just copy these, I'll put it right here. Uh, however, there is a negative, a minus six here. So we have to subtract six from all of these. So zero minus six is uh, negative six. I think you would see it would be negative six, negative six, negative six. Over here, it would be one minus six, which is negative five. I think you can understand that would be negative five, negative five, negative five. And then this two minus six would be negative four. And that kind of gives us a sense of what the next step is gonna be, okay? Now, once you have just a few of these, then you'll be able to get the pattern. You're gonna be able to see what's going on. So we have zero comma negative six. That's gonna be here. So that happens to be a point on the graph. We have 0.5 negative six, that's right here. And you have 0.9 negative six right here. So we can clearly see there's an open circle there and it's this little horizontal line right there, okay? Uh, we just satisfy the first three points. Now look at, let's look at this one. One comma negative five. So apparently it goes here, one comma negative five. And I think you can already see what the pattern's gonna be, all right? So we don't even have to worry too much about the details. Once you catch the pattern, you just know that it sort of repeats everywhere to make your teacher happy, maybe represent the situation down here as well, okay? Now, it's possible for my student watching, it's possible your um, teacher is gonna give you, um, it's possible your teacher is gonna give you relatively more complicated ones, okay? Um, and just pay very close attention to how you know what your teacher says about that i will say for the complicated ones uh, in my opinion that's where this method really shines okay um so that is that hopefully that helps oh what's the domain and range whoops well check this out well this is actually interesting so the domain once again is asking which of these x values on the x axis would have a home if you went up or down? Well, I think you could see that all of them would. Like if you pick this one, if you went down, well, yes, you would indeed land on the graph. So uh, that has a home. So it is for that reason that from negative infinity to positive infinity, um, you know, the domain would stretch, okay? Now, when it comes to the range, that's gonna be a little bit weird, okay? Um, it's gonna be all integers. Now, I'm gonna explain that in a moment, okay? Um, if you wanna be fancy, you can say the set of all integers. Now, with regards to why the range is the set of all integers, remember, what the range is essentially saying is which of these y values on the y axis would have a home on the graph if you went left or if you went right. Well, clearly, if you were to investigate, for example, um, this sort of negative 4.5, right? Can you see how if we went to the right, we would actually miss the graph. It would like shoot between the bars. And if we went to the left, well, yeah, I mean, there's nothing over here. So all of these weird decimal-y things would actually not have a home on the graph. So we're not including those in the range. However, when it comes to the actual integers, like negative four, well, if you went to the right, well, yes, you would hit the graph. Boom, there it is right there, okay? Um, amazing. So the range would be the set of all integers, that's why, okay? Because all of these integers would have a home on the graph. Okay, so for my student watching, good job. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. By the way, um, Pantera recommendations, in my opinion, mouth for war. You must start there. Um, number two, mm, cemetery gates. Number three, for a Pantera recommendation, regular people. And number four, 
let's see. Hmm. You know, I got I take these things very seriously, so I have to uh, kind of think about it. Let's say I'm going to say strength beyond strength. Okay. Now, mouth for war will give you the gist of the base of what the mosh pit might feel like if you're at a concert. It also has a very strong ending. Cemetery Gates shows the range of the band. That's one of their earlier songs. People love that song. It's sort of a ballad type song. Regular People is one of those Pantera songs that only the true fans recognize. So you have normal fans who know all the hits, and then you have the true fans who would all sort of agree that uh, Regular People is particularly good. Okay. Um, so that's a pretty bold claim I'm making. Um, but I feel confident that the true fans <laughs> would agree with me. Uh, number four, Strength Beyond Strength. That's, there's an album called Far Beyond Driven. That's track one off of Far Beyond Driven. And that really sets the new pace and the new direction for the band. Okay, now this will take a little while to get used to, but I would say around the second or third listen, you're going to get it. And actually, I have to put down uh, bleeping, bleeping hostile. You must be familiar with that. I think your friend who's into Pantera would agree. You need to hear that song. That is a crowd favorite. If it's at a concert and they bust out the riff, everyone's going to go nuts for this song. Okay. Uh, so that's a classic. Um, this is on Vulgar Display of Power. This is on Vulgar Display of Power. This is on Vulgar Display of Power. This is on Far Beyond Driven. And this one is on Cowboys from Hell, which is one of their earlier albums. Okay. So um, most people would agree that uh, the best albums are Vulgar Display of Power and far beyond driven. So the red check and the green check. All right. So hopefully that helps with the music side of things. And I will talk to you later. And for those of you watching, check out Pantera. They're really good. And I will see you next time. Bye.